Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Hello everyone, this is John S. Scott with What's Happening Birmingham. Today I have the honor and pleasure of being with Councilman John Hillier of City Council District 9. So Councilman Hillier, thank you for taking time out this great afternoon to sit down and talk with me. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be doing this with you, you know, to talk about all the things that are happening uh, in the district, in the city, and uh, it's an exciting time to be involved. All right. So, like I was telling you all before, I'm doing a Know Your City Government series where I'm sitting now with all the people that's involved in Birmingham City Government. So, I'm starting with the council side, and I'm heading over to the mayor's side. So, first of all, Councilman Hill, tell people, where is District 9? Wow, the District, District 9 is out uh, in the western part of Birmingham. We cover uh, Wylam, North Birmingham. Uh, uh, we cover uh, Pratt City, Inslee. We cover Westchester. Uh, we cover just a, 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 a variety of areas. Uh, Thomas is a part of our district, and uh, we're just so excited to be working in a constituents. Uh, it's an area that I've known for many years. I represented that area when I was in the state legislature. Mm -hmm. Now I represent it well, now that I'm on the city council, and my family has been a part of that community for 123 years. So I feel indebted to uh, to that uh, to District Nine. All right. So what's some latest news with District Nine that you don't hear on the news? Wow. Or you know, council meetings? we have so many exciting things in District Nine. Uh, we have 19 neighborhoods in District okay. 9, so I have 19 bosses that, uh, that okay. I have to answer to in District right. 9, okay. and, uh, and, a, and a, just a, a very well-educated community. I'm, I'm blessed to have uh, people in my community that are very informed, and they understand what's going on. Some of the things that we have going on in District 9 right now that I can think of, we have uh, one Pratt Park, which is right behind the Pratt City Library. It's about to open. We push for that to happen. We're so excited about that development <clears throat> in the Wylam area. We're excited about the Wylam Library. Uh, we have secured the funds to uh, build the Wylam Library, so that's beginning to happen. In the park in Wylam, we have just secured the new field and bleaches there, and soon to be building our, our, our restrooms and that in that area. <coughs> Wylam has really been a big part of our area uh, to do. We've helped get uh, crosswalk signs for Wylam Elementary School. We've uh, been to Wylam Elementary School. We've met with the principal and, and uh, we've toured the school on many occasions. Uh, when we go to uh, North Birmingham, Carver High School is uh, is in my district. We have a boxing program that's about to take place in, uh, in there for kids ages 12 to 18. Uh, and when you say boxing, it's not so much about the boxing part of it, but what we're going to be doing is educating the kids. And in educating the kids, one of the things that we're going to do we're going to do field trips to go down to the Muhammad Ali uh, Success Center. It's important for us kid, our kids to see somebody who look like them that's been successful and really made it happen. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that trip myself. With our neighborhood leaders, we try to educate our neighborhood leaders. So every quarter, we bring them together. We last did a tour of District 9 where we stopped at restaurants and businesses and radio stations. And we took everybody to the zoo. Now we're excited this time around. Our next quarterly trip, we'll be going to Montgomery to uh, to the Lynching Museum uh, on June the 1st, where uh, along the trip uh, on the bus, we will be uh, entertained by a comedian. We will have talks and conversations about what's happening in the city of Birmingham. So what I realized, the more informed and educated that my constituents are, the better that our uh, District 9 will be and the better that I would be. So those are just a few things. I'm excited about our, uh, our aviation program. I want every kid in District 9 to have the opportunity to be able to get their pilot license by the time they finish school. Okay and learn not only that, uh, use the airport as a training facility. We have the flight museum that is being built right now as we speak. We're excited about that. So the kids will be educated. They can start uh, in the fifth grade in some of our flight clubs and go all the way up to the 12th grade. So by the time they graduate, uh, they will be pilots and they also will be programs that are certificate type programs that can start them possibly making anything from $90 an hour and up. Uh, we're excited about that. Uh, and also uh, learning the mechanics of planes. Uh, they would be guaranteed a job starting at 70000 and up. 
uh, when they graduate with just a two-year education in learning how to repair planes. That that industry needs some 480,000 people mm -hmm. to apply. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a, 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 a great future for uh, the constituents and the kids in District 9. I'm really excited about all of the things that are happening in District 9. Uh, we're, we're, we're glad to see things going. We have a, a real estate group where we will be training uh, young people and older people to uh, understand and know how to uh, help save their community, invest in their community, and buy their community. And uh, so we're pushing that type of thing. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, uh, I think we, we've, sent, we've sent kids to, to, uh, to Gun and uh, you know to Africa from Jackson Ola High School. We sent uh, a kid to Africa. Uh, which was extraordinary. We also uh, sent kids at Carver and Jackson Ola to Washington, D.C. for an entire week. Uh, we sent a, a lot of kids there to get exposure. I believe in exposing our kids to the world. Uh, our International Trade uh, Center, we're, we're doing uh, what they call a World Trade Center of Birmingham, where we want to turn the, uh, the, uh, the medical form building that's on to the Civic Center will be the, uh, uh, the World Trade Center of Birmingham. I am so excited about that. That was going to be awesome, where we will have all of the um, all of the foreign governments that deal with suppliers and, and world trades around the world will be located there so we can expose our constituents to the world. So we're going to be global in District 9 and spread all over the world. So I'm excited about our World Trade Center. People don't know this, but District 9 has a water port, okay. a port that leads out to the ocean. It's, uh, you go straight out uh, Ansley, it's 20th Street, leads you to Berman Port. Uh, there are some funds right now that we will be capable of getting that will uh, take us, uh, that will allow us to do some dredging there, that will allow us to do some more ports there, and be able to go out all over the world. You know, I'm excited about Build Up Inslee. Wow. Okay. Man, that's a group of 28 to 29 young people that renovates. They learn to use their hands to build houses and, and do that. If they're, It's a six-year program. They go from high school all the way to... Uh, to getting a certificate from uh, a two-year certificate from uh, from uh, Lawson State, and once they achieve that, when they finish the program, they get their own house and their own investment property. And it was fascinating to be there this past week, where the young kids finished the house. A young lady who helped build the house, repair the house. Okay. Her and her mother will now be moving in the house, and she was just as excited to say that she renovated that house and took it from uh, from nothing and made something out of it. So uh, we will see young people and build up insulin be go uh, go into the middle class. So what we try to do is work with all uh, particular parts of that uh, type of issue. Those are some of the things that's happening in District Nine. Okay, so <coughs> let me go back to your day-to-day -day duties as a city council person. Mm. Um, for those people who just think, oh, they just think you guys just show up on Tuesdays. Wow. Or just neighborhood meeting. Can you just wow. kind of tell the people living? Well, you know, your, what? You know, I wish you could follow me. Actuality, this job is 24 hours a day. You know, from the time I sit down on my bed, and from the time I get up in the morning, my phone starts ringing all the way until I go to sleep at all night. Right. Uh, people see you come home. They see you pull into your driveway. So you're never off. It's a round-the-clock job. It is a daunting task. I will admit to that because there are so many issues that has to be handled on a day-to-day -day basis. So my, my morning normally starts around, uh, around 5, 5.30 in the morning. Uh, I get to the gym after that. I'm uh, at my mother's house. She's a foster parent with two boys with autism. So I go and get them ready, give them a bath, and put them on the school bus. That's normally when my day starts. And then I get to City Hall around 9, 9.30 uh, in the morning, and my meetings go throughout the day. And right. sometimes a lot of the meetings are off-site, and it keeps you running and everything else. It's a bit different from when I served in the legislature. You know, we're only in four months out of the year, and you're not as much in the public eye as you are here. Uh, it's a tough deal, but I, I work around it. I, I, you know, as, as my chief of staff said to me once, he said, you know, the beauty of our jobs, we get to serve and help people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we change lives all the time. When I can turn and see some of those young people going to Washington and going to Africa, and they'd never been on a plane before. You know, I mean, that in itself, and you see them all excited and getting ready to fly off 
and then you see their faces when they come back. So that's really worth the uh, sacrifice. So, uh, but when I'm when I'm not doing the political thing during the day, I'm a real estate broker. Okay. So I'm in real estate investment. I do real estate wholesaling. I do real estate sales. Uh, 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 I'm doing that. And uh, my daughter and I, are business partners, we're developing senior living. Uh, we have an assistant living facility uh, that she runs. It's ca I call Ivy Gate Assistant Living Facility, and it's it's uh, uh, for seniors. It's a beautiful uh, piece of property, uh, uh, very tranquil. I would say uh, in the woods, you know, and it has a surrounding, so you see the deers and the turtles and that type of thing. So I'm in the senior living uh, 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 business too. But overall, uh, it's a it's a tough day. I have to have a scheduler. Someone keeps my schedule for me. I don't take per, uh, schedules myself personally because I, I forget about them. <clears throat> so I, uh, my, my office keeps my schedule. So if anybody wanted to meet with me, they'd have to do it through my office. And then we kind of roll it out from, the, from that day from that day forward. But uh, I love what I do. I'm, I'm excited about being able to help people. All right, well, I'm going to go back to your time in the state legislature. Wow. How wow. did that prepare you for the city council? Well, wow. let me say this, man, and I, I one day hopefully I'll just write a book about that. Mm -hmm. uh, that was probably uh, was so exciting uh, when I got elected to the Alabama legislature. Of course, for me it was a life dream. I uh, I had been involved as a kid in uh, campaigning and and canvassing. I I seen uh, I seen our city leaders at that time. Dr. Arrington, uh, former Congressman Earl Hilliard, uh, UW Clements, who was a state senator, uh, Ralph Cook, who was in the Supreme Court. I had so many mentors to watch over the years. And then uh, I specifically attended Alabama State University because it was right down the street from the Capitol. And I could go to the legislature and watch them. So uh, that was a thing of mine. It was sort of like a hobby. So I knew when I came home <clears throat> that I was going to run for, uh, for the legislature. And I will tell you this, when I came, there was a large turnover, a lot of people. So I rose to the top very fast. I already knew uh, the rules. I already knew what to do because I've been watching them for four years in college. And uh, in the time there, I served with some brilliant, brilliant African Americans and whites, but mm -hmm. uh, but blacks were they, the, the 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 black caucus were my mentors. I served with Dr. Yvonne Kennedy, who uh, who developed Bishop State College and the national president of Delta Sigma Theta sorority. She was a great mentor of mine. Uh, Demetrius Newton, who was from Birmingham, mm -hmm. an attorney, very well educated mm -hmm. African American. I, I serve with some people with strong voices, and when people hear me speak, they like, wow, well, I, I had a chance to study some of the best uh, voices in the world. Uh, my seatmate, which was uh, a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Lewis Spratt, he, he was out of the North Birmingham area. Mr. Spratt helped me navigate and learn how to, uh, to navigate and network in the legislature, and I used that. I networked. I went to meetings. I always tell young people, the key to it is going to the meetings. I went to the meetings and I would learn from that mm -hmm. and that helped me in what I'm doing here today. All right, well, let's kind of go forward a little bit and let's talk about the 2020 budget. <laughs> wow. This is one of the most important parts of the year, yes. for the most important parts of your job. You know, you get a chance to give out money yes. and where you guys decide to distribute money to certain city services. So right. tell me your, your thoughts so well, far. I often, say, I often say this to the constituents. Birmingham is a city built for 400,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have 200,000 people. Mm -hmm. So imagine this. You have a city that's built for 400,000, which means that we got $400,000 million worth of bills and, and money we have to deal mm -hmm. with. But we only have half the people mm -hmm. and half the money to pay for it. So a lot of times it's like playing Russian roulette. Okay. You're, moving, you're moving the funds around trying to satisfy people. So that hopefully, uh, well, I think we have some plans put in place uh, that will help uh, bring uh, people back to Birmingham. You know, we got the uh, Birmingham plan that we're working on now where any student that graduates from a Birmingham public school system will be able to go to college, uh, junior college and four-year institution anywhere in the state of Alabama free. Uh, we would like to bring uh, people back to uh, Birmingham to really get involved. So we're really excited about uh, about that type of stuff. All right, so one of the biggest things I noticed, and maybe just early, you know, um, reading on the budgets that for the first time ever, 
each individual counselor will get a bigger discretionary fund. Well, that is that, that true. Uh, 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 well, let me uh, say this. Uh, I, I think that's that that looks good, mm -hmm. but uh, that ain't enough for me to do anything with for the people in my district. Okay. So a lot of that is you know it, it's a proposed budget. Okay. So so a lot of that stuff we're gonna revisit, okay. uh, and we're gonna do some listening tours mm -hmm. so that constituents could actually have input in the budget. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully you'll come out to okay. Mac Alpine Park. Okay. Uh, when we do it and we'll talk we'll have another discussion I think the constituents need to understand the budget and what's going on it and that uh, we work to maybe increase the neighborhood they only get like two thousand dollars now I would love for them to have five thousand uh, dollars or more you know so I want to work with them I'm a people's person I believe that uh, that that we should before I make a move I work for 19 other neighborhoods mm -hmm. so I work for a lot of people and I need their input. So before we jump to any budgets, before I give my concrete opinion or my vote, mm -hmm. that's the only power we really have is allocating the money. So uh, I want to do it wisely. So I want to slow it down, give my constituents a chance to weigh in on it before uh, we commit to anything. Okay, so then on the council, what committees are you currently head of or a member of? I'm <clears throat> very fortunate. I chair economic development, okay. and uh, economic development is everything that's taking place, building, construction. It makes it very tough. I had a decision today to make where well, one neighborhood didn't want to see something get approved, but I did feel like it was a great economic project that would bring uh, great revenue to the city and, and everything else. But I, I like to be uh, seen with the neighborhood because that's who I work for, the community, and uh, they wanted to slow it down and everything else. So you have to make decisions sometimes that, uh, and I voted with the neighborhood to, uh, to slow it down a little bit and, and everything else, but uh, we, we got some good things going. And the budget itself, uh, I think for the most part, uh, there, may, there are a lot of stuff in there that I could work with, but some of the stuff we need to change, we need to talk about it, and we need to slow it down. Well, one thing I've been reading in the news lately is this concept of food deserts here in the city of Birmingham. And I think you all have took some actions and different things about it. Can you tell the viewers a little bit more about what this yeah, ongoing actually, issue? Yeah, actually, you know, let me tell you, the problem we have is that uh, the, the administration has been working extremely hard. The mayor's office has been working hard to get more grocery stores ser that's serving great produce and vegetables and fruit, all the stuff that makes us think a lot faster uh, to be put into our communities. Unfortunately, we have a lot of dollar stores that are in our area that uh, that really gets in the way of that, and uh, and we're really trying to uh, we're really trying to uh, limit uh, those dollar stores because a lot of times uh, these stores are not selling the nutrients that we need in our community. So if you go into some of the other communities, you got whole food, you got fresh vegetables being sold, and uh, and everything else. When in our community, you're dealing with a lot of uh, packaged food with high sodium, uh, uh, sugar that that keeps you hyped up. You know, and uh, and things that really make it hard for your body to function as you need it. So that's uh, that's a difference. So hopefully uh, we can see more produce. I think we have a, a produce produce trucks now. We'll be able to come around and move around to neighborhoods selling fruits and vegetables the way it used to be when I was a kid. And uh, and hopefully uh, by us putting this moratorium on so many of them, we can now attract more grocery stores. Uh, 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 to come to our area, so it's a difficult task, but it's it's something we have to start to attack. Do you worry sometimes that people may say, "Well, Dollar General is bringing jobs into these areas"? That how you, how do you balance that versus you know like what you're saying? I think education. Yeah. I think education. We have to educate our community. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, you putting health over everything. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering why our kids can't test well in school. They're not getting the right vitamins. Mm -hmm. They're not getting the, the fresh produce and vegetables, you know. So I think once the community itself was educated and they see the statistics, they probably want to get rid of these dollar stores altogether. Okay. And, you know, because it makes a difference how your kid tests, whether your kid got enough where he can't sleep because he had too much sugar, you know, too much sodium. And, uh, 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 you know, I tell people all the time, when you look at all those drinks and stuff with all that sugar in it and you're wondering uh, how come you, you, your kids are so hyper, you know? Uh, so, so really, uh, once you're educated, it's an easy decision to make. All right. So let's go look five years ahead. What do you think is Birmingham's, this is a two-part question, what do you think is Birmingham's biggest opportunity 
and their biggest challenge. Oh, wow, man. Let me say this much. I think our largest opportunity now is to re-educate our workforce. Okay. <clears throat> we got to get our young people prepared for technology, uh, for, uh, for coding. We got to get them prepared for being uh, entrepreneurs. We've got to let them know because let me tell you something. We're now dealing with 5G. 5G uh, technology will change the world in terms of co the way devices communicate, cars and, 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 and electric houses and, mm -hmm. and buildings. Uh, we have a lot of work to do to get our work. Uh, the majority of the jobs that exist today, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 to 20, will not exist. All right. Will not exist. So things as you and I both know it will not exist. Uh, so we got to get them prepared for future opportunities. So uh, I would hope that we have some aggressive, I would hope that uh, five years from now my kids would have gone through our um, our aviation program. Mm -hmm. They would know more about flights and they will be trained for higher pro, pro, uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, <clears throat> what was the second part of your question? Uh, biggest challenge. Oh, you know what, man, let me tell you something. Uh, getting more people back into the city to let them know that Birmingham is a gold mine. Others are moving back and selling their houses and, and homes and coming back here, moving into the toughest communities and redeveloping them, letting them know that the land here is valuable, getting more rooftops in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. We get more rooftops. We get more uh, tax-based money. We can do more to help our community. So the toughest challenge is telling people that you can make it in Birmingham. Birmingham is very valuable, and we must come back to our communities to, uh, to rebuild them and reclaim our time and our building and our real estate. All right. Um, this is a very, you know, we've been talking. Wow. Is there anything else you want to tell the viewers, you know, what you're doing, what the city council is doing, what you in the mayor's office? you all together as a team that they don't hear about in the news. Well, absolutely. Let me say this. We have so much that comes at us on a daily basis. We deal with things uh, happening at our state legislature right now. As we speak, they're debating the medical marijuana bill in the Alabama state legislature as we speak. This is an economic revenue that will not only help us uh, uh, in terms of our health, but also uh, will create a, 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 a billion dollar industry overnight. We need to be involved in that From as African Americans. We need to have a stake in uh, what happens there. So uh, there's a lot happening out here. I ask the community to find out personally what your what what your pub what your leaders are doing. We work extremely hard. There is not enough hours or days or time to do what we do. We need your support. Uh, I put a lot of hours into this, and I want to see us reap benefits for the next generation. So I'm here not for myself, but I'm here to support the next generation and see it go to another level. So they'd like to contact your office. Yes, contact, contact my office. You can reach out to. Uh, John.Hilliard at BirminghamAL.gov. John, J O H N dot H I L L I A R D at BirminghamAL.gov. You can also call 205 254 2302. If it's in District 9, if you're, or either in the city of Birmingham, is there something that we can do or explain? I often tell people our jobs is to build relationships and network uh, so that we can make a difference in our community. I want to thank you for having me, too. Well, man. thank you, too, Councilman. Awesome. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, absolutely, yes. Absolutely, Yes, you know, and you know, like I was telling everybody, we're going to be con continuing this series, you know, interviewing all the city councilors, the head of the city departments, coming back to Mayor Woodfin again, because we want to keep you informed. And, of wow. course, you know, at the end of the day, I want to tell you, since my name is What's Happening in Birmingham, I want to tell you what's happening in Birmingham. Wow. No wow. other way than go to the people that's making it happen. Wow. So thank you all again for watching. Thank please, you. Please check out my website, What's Happening in Birmingham, for more videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all again, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website app or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.